Hi everybody, it's Ann, and welcome back to the Blog Spot. Now today we're going to talk about Jussie Smollett and what criminal charges could Jussie and Kim Fox face from the special prosecutor. This came from the Frank Report, and it came out on September 22nd. Okay, here we go. Potential charges against Jussie Smollett regarding state charges. The special prosecutor could ask a grand jury to reinstate the 16 felony counts of disorderly conduct that were dismissed in March by Joseph Magads, who at that time was serving as the acting Cook County State Attorney. Kim Fox, the Cook County State Attorney, had appointed him to that position when she removed herself from the case. Because there is no double jeopardy issue that would prevent that from happening since Jussie Smollett was never tried on those charges and since he never entered into any plea deal with the Cook County State Attorney's Office regarding them. In Illinois, a person commits the felony of disorderly conduct when they knowingly transmit or cause to be transmitted to any peace officer, public officer, or public employee a report to the effect that an offense has been committed, is being committed, or will be committed even though there is no reasonable ground for them to believe that to be true. Based on that definition, it seems highly probable that Justice Smollett will be re-indicted on one or more counts of felony disorderly conduct. As far as federal charges, it's also possible that Justice Smollett could be facing a federal charge for mail fraud. The potential mail fraud charge has to do with the letter that Jussie Smollett received on January 22nd, about a week before the alleged attack. The letter was mailed to Jussie at the Chicago based Science Space Studios, which is where the show Empire is filmed, and contained a cartoon figure strung up by a noose and cut out letters spelling out you will die black f a g it also contained a white substance which prompted a hazmat team to respond to the science space studios and remove the letter and its contents the white substance turned out to be crushed Tylenol. The crime of mail fraud consists of two elements, devising or intending to devise a scheme to defraud or to perform specified fraudulent acts, and number two, using the mail system for the purpose of executing or attempting to execute the scheme or to perform specified fraudulent acts. I just want to share a story with you, and I'll go back to Jussie, but it's about mail fraud. One time this company called me and said I had got a payday loan from them, and I don't do payday loans, so I know it wasn't true. So I told them to mail me the paperwork they have. They kept sending it to me by email. I looked up the company. They kept saying I got the loan from. And that company doesn't even do business in the state I live in. In other words, if a company doesn't mail it to you, more than likely it's a scam. Just thought I'd share that with everybody. Okay, let's continue. The penalties... For committing mail fraud, include a fine and a sentence of up to 20 years in federal prison. 
the FBI has been handling the investigation concerning the letter, but has not released any information about its investigation. The primary issue regarding any potential federal charges concerns the meaning of the term scheme or artifice to defraud. Artifice means used to trick or deceive others. According to several sources, Smollett sent the letter to himself as part of his attempt to get a salary increase from the producers of the Empire show. Whether that constitutes fraud is open to question. And Renato Mariotti, a former federal prosecutor, has said that I don't think there is any reasonable chance that will happen. But don't be surprised if Dan Webb seeks a mail fraud indictment against Jesse Smollett. Given Jesse Smollett's refusal to back down from his ludicrous claim that he was attacked by two men, he put a noose around his neck and poured bleach on him. The writer of this article said, they have no problem with that whatsoever. Okay, the potential charges against Fox. Numerous individuals and organizations have publicly rebuked Fox for her handling of the Justice Smollett case. That includes the Illinois Prosecutors Bar Association, IPBA, which represents over 1,000 Illinois prosecutors. In a statement that was released shortly after the charges against Smollett were dismissed, the IPBA stated, the Cook County State's Attorney's handling of the Jesse Smollett case is not condoned by the IPBA, nor is it representative of the honest, ethical work prosecutors provide to the citizens of the state of Illinois on a daily basis. The IPBA also claimed that Fox had violated state law when she appointed McGatts as acting Cook County State Attorney. When an elected state's attorney removes herself from a prosecution, Illinois law provides that the court should appoint a special prosecutor. The IPBA statement read, Here the state's attorney kept the case within her office and thus never actually removed herself as a matter of law. Although it appears that she definitely violated the state law, it's unlikely that Fox will face any criminal charges for doing so. Unless, of course, Dan Webb can put together a conspiracy charge against her and the others who were involved in the charade that ended with Justice Smollett not being prosecuted. Even if Kim Fox doesn't face charges, I don't think she's going to be reelected. It's up to the voters now. In recent years, Congress and the vast majority of state legislators have passed hate crime laws that are intended to protect people against crimes that are motivated by the state or feeling of being actively opposed or hostile to someone or something or motivation to do something over one or more of their personal characteristics. The only states that currently do not have such hate crime laws are Arkansas, Georgia, South Carolina, and Wyoming. These hate crime laws usually include harsher punishments for crimes that are committed because of the victim's age, color, disability, ethnicity, gender, gender identity, national origin, 
race, religion, or sexual orientation. While many have questioned the constitutionality of these laws, Georgia is the only state whose hate crime statute has been struck down by its highest court. Based on the Justice Smollett case, it may be time for Congress and state legislatures to start passing statutes that would impose special penalties on those who fake a hate crime. Because he claimed that he was attacked on the basis of his race and his sexual orientation, and because in doing so, he raised the level of tension in the city of Chicago between blacks and whites and between straights and the LGBTQ communities, this writer believes that Jesse Smollett deserves a harsher punishment than the average person who files a false report of a crime. The writer of this article also believes that the penalties imposed on those who make such false reports should be proportionate to the seriousness of the fake crime they reported. For example, a person who falsely reports that they were kidnapped and sexually assaulted should face a harsher sentence than someone who falsely reports that their cell phone was stolen. Okay, that's going to 